everybody, welcome back to Cotto Verdi. My name's Annette and today we are autumn sowing sweet peas. The reason that we autumn sow sweet peas is quite simple. It just gives you a jump start on your blooms next year. So you can sow your sweet peas um, in the autumn like I am now. Probably you want to do it by October um, at the very latest. Um, the other time that you can sow sweet peas is kind of February, March time. Um, and then that will give you blooms a little bit later in the summer, but um, you could do both basically and that will sort of stagger your bloom so you'll get some blooms that bloom a little bit earlier and probably fade a little bit faster and then you'll get other blooms if you sow them in February that will bloom a little bit later and maybe last a little bit longer. Having said that I sowed some sweet peas um when did I say that I think I sowed some sweet peas in February last year and I still have some very ropey admittedly blooms on some sweet peas now and I'll put a little video up to show you what they're like. They are ropey because it's been pouring with rain um, and they're not, there aren't many blooms. And the reason that I've struggled this year with my sweet peas is because we had um, a lot of deer coming into the garden and eating all my seedlings. So basically every time they grew a little bit, the deer would come and eat all the young shoots and then they'd grow a bit more and the deer would come back and munch on the, the young shoots. So they were just deadheading my sweet pea plants constantly until we managed to get a deer fence in. And as soon as we got the deer fence in, the sweet peas managed to grow a bit, but they were very late to start um, coming into their own, which is why I'm really only getting some flowers now, which is so disappointing, but we are fine for this year. I'm going to have loads of blooms come next year because we have the deer fence up, no deer, and I am autumn sowing for the first time ever, actually. I'm autumn sowing sweet peas this year. So I'm going to sow my sweet peas today. I'm going to water them in and then I'm going to keep them in the house, in the warmth. We don't have the heating on yet, but it is not particularly cold at the moment. So I'm going to keep them in the house until I see shoots appearing. And as soon as I see shoots appearing, I'm going to either put them in my cold frames or probably in my greenhouse, little mini greenhouses. I don't actually have a proper glass greenhouse yet, but I'll put them in my little mini greenhouses because I think those greenhouses get more sun than the cold frames. It's as simple as that. Otherwise I'd put them in the cold frames. And I'm going to overwinter these sweet peas in these pots in those greenhouses and just let them grow on. So you can use pretty much anything to grow your sweet peas in, except I would say the one thing you need to know if you haven't grown sweet peas before is that they really like to have like a lot of long root growth, which is why a lot of people use root trainers to grow their sweet peas. Now I've never invested in root trainers before and I don't want to start now because I don't want to add more plastic to what I have. So what I'm using today are nine centimeter pots and that's nine centimeters in length here and that's about three inches I think and these would be absolutely fine to start my sweet peas in and I'm probably going to put two or three to each pot um, you can also use and a lot of people do this I've seen it it's all over the internet but a lot of people use um, toilet rolls you know once you've finished and those work absolutely fine you could also fashion something by using a jar and you could you know wrap newspaper around it and fashion a pot holder that way um, or you could use you know one of those tall yogurt pots probably um, but do remember to punch holes in the bottom because your sweet peas need drainage talking about sweet peas and drainage a lot of people will soak their sweet peas beforehand I'm not going to do that and this is the first time I've never soaked my sweet peas and the reason I'm not soaking my sweet peas is because on Gardener's World the other day I saw Monty Don sowing his sweet peas without soaking them and he says he's never soaked his sweet peas so I thought I'd try I will water them in so the compost will be moist I will make sure that it is constantly damp not soggy or anything. I can't remember if I've mentioned this already in the video today, but I'm sowing a combination of sweet peas. So I am sowing five annual sweet peas and all these sweet peas are in my color choices. So they're all pretty much a variation of pink and white. Um, I don't tend to sow the blue ones anymore. Um, I don't know whether that'll change in the future. It's just at the moment, what I like to have are the pink and white ones or pink ones or just, you know, variations on pink and white and then the other sweet peas I'm saying today I think I've got five packets of hardy sweet peas and the hardy sweet peas basically are unscented so you need to know that is that they are I think they're all unscented and 
but they look exactly like a sweet pea but they will come back year after year after year so if you sow them this year they're going to keep coming back because they're a perennial and that doesn't mean that you have to wait for seeds to drop to, for them to regenerate the actual plant itself will come back year after year but so whilst they look beautiful they're not going to be scented so if you're looking for the scent you do need to sow the annuals and if you don't mind and you'd rather not have to sow them every single year and you just want pretty blooms to bring into your house then you can sow the perennials so i'm going to go through the varieties that i'm sowing today and then i'm just going to show you how i'm going to do it so the sweet peas that i'm sowing today now these are the annuals so these are scented but they won't come back each year and I'm going to put a picture up on the screen so you can see what they look like. So I'm sowing Spring Sunshine Champagne. I'm going to sow Mrs. Bernard Jones. I'm going to sow Molly Rillstone and Gwendolyn. And then the last one I'm sowing is Anniversary. And as I said, those are pretty much all um, going to be variations of pink or white, which you will have seen on the screen. And then the hardy perennials that I'm sowing today. In fact, one of them says it's a half hardy annual, but I'm going to treat it like a hardy perennial. And I'm going to put a picture up on the screen of these for you. So I'm sowing a sweet pea and it's called Latherus, which is the Latin name for sweet pea. And then this one's called Chloranthus. And it's kind of like a greeny colored, creamy greeny colored sweet pea. And then I'm going to be sowing Latherus sylvestris and Latherus roseus and then the last two I'm sowing are pink and the first one is called Latherus latifolius and the last one is called Latherus chilensis and I'm going to treat these sweet peas in exactly the same way whether they are um, annuals or hardy annuals so the compost I'm using today is the Melcourt Silver Grey Peat Free Compost. This is like a multi-purpose compost, but it's peat free and it's made by Melcourt. And um, this is not a sponsored ad, but I really like this peat free compost. It's a really good consistency and I've had excellent results using this compost over the last few years. If you can go peat free, it's really important to preserve our peat bogs and you know help with global warming and all that sort of stuff. Um, and I do know that even now, still um, a few years into trying to go peat free the the peat free compost is more costly and I do understand if you can't do that especially at the moment but if you can and you can or you can find you know the Melcourt um, compost very economically priced then do use it I'll put a link actually below um, along with other products that I recommend but this is not a sponsored ad or anything but there's a link below if you want to see what the compost looks like um, and uh, so I do that now I have got a tiny bit of grit in this compost but that's just because I had some mixed up already from a previous sowing of something else and it had a bit of grit in it but um, I don't think you need to put grit in and sweet peas actually are fairly hungry plants so don't feel you need to put grit in just make sure that your compost is not going to be soggy because if your compost is too soggy your peas will just turn to mush they literally will turn to an, a gooey mush and disappear in fact you'll think that you haven't sown anything so try to make sure your compost is not too wet this is dry I haven't pre-moistened it but I will water my sweet peas in so all you're going to do is you're going to plant your sweet peas not particularly deeply actually and I'm just going to make two holes in that particular one there I'm going to this is spring sunshine champagne so I'm going to label my pot and then I'm just going to drop, drop my sweet peas into these holes. One there and one there. And you can cover them up if you want, or you can not cover them up if you want to see whether they're germinating. And then I'm just going to do another two because I've got, you can put three in a pot if you want to, but I've got two more seeds in this packet. So this one I'm not going to spring sow because I've only got four seeds left over. There we go. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing for the rest of these sweet peas. Now 
now that all my sweet peas are sown all I'm going to do is water them in make sure the compost is properly damp and make sure that they've drained before I bring them inside I'm going to bring them inside as I said until I see little shoots appearing and as soon as I see the shoots appearing I will bring them out into a colder cooler environment either in my cold frames or my probably my zippy greenhouses and just let them grow slowly over the winter and they will grow very slowly what you want them to be doing is forming really good root systems in these tall pots um, and that's what they will do if should they get to more than four pairs of leaves four sets of leaves then I will nip out the tops because you don't want them to get long and leggy so make sure that they've got loads of light if you don't have anywhere that you can keep your sweet peas over the winter to protect them then don't worry because you can definitely sow them um, in February next year or March next year and you don't have to sow them into pots you could also as soon as you've had your last frost sow them directly into the ground I, I wouldn't advise doing that if you've got deer <laughs> or rabbits in your garden probably um, because they'll just munch them unless you can protect them somewhere with a cage or a net um, but I've got a video on my channel you can take a look at to see how to do that. So don't worry if you can't do them now. But if you can, it's a really good way to get a head start on blooms next year. And I will keep you updated with everything that's going on with my sweet peas. So do follow along on my channel or follow me on Instagram where I will post regular updates as to how my sweet peas are doing. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. To just pop into the garden and do some quick job, quick, quick jobs. Seriously. A fly just flew into my eyelash. I'll start again.